as I've said, one of the coolest things about this like old draft work is going back and looking at guys who failed and thinking about why. Um, and Derek Williams is another really good example of like a you know high level pick in the last you know ten or so years that busted, and people saw plays like this, especially in like the tournament where he was just putting guys on posters with like ridiculously athletic put back dunks. Um, and just unbelievable like explosion in traffic with those like mean two hand finishes, and people were rightfully very excited, and you know he ended up going in the top two, but um, Williams's failure I think illustrates quite a few pretty like important and fundamental lessons about scouting, much which m many of which I've already talked about on this channel, but we're gonna go over them and kind of break down his game, like people really thought like this guy was like crazy upside um like this the the you know draft writing and stuff from 2011 is not the easiest to find like but it seemed like people viewed him as like you know a super high upside guy with his tools um this thread is a gold mine shout out to my to my guy uh my guy mikey v for putting me uh to my guy mikey v for for putting this on to me um and you know good call by him i'll, I'll link this in the, in the description like people you know, we're kind of just like going through his flaws. Um, and this was just clearly not true that, you know, Derek didn't have flaws like that. And the like just the scouting analysis was so rudimentary compared to what it is today, just even in mainstream stuff. But the idea that like he was a high upside prospect, you know, obviously stemmed from his crazy vertical athleticism, the insane dunks and the same and the, you know, the insane power and explosion. But Based on what we know now, like a lot of the markers for upside, like, you know, age and intelligence and skill and stuff were, were not really there. A majority of Derek's scoring game was like post work um, or like interior work where he was turning over his shoulder and, you know, hitting these hook shots um, or finishing in, in traffic like we saw. Um, or he was able to like, you know, drive and, and finish through contact. The, the foul drawing was a huge draw. And, you know, he was an incredible, incredible foul drawer. Um, this one's Derek. Like, that free throw rate is just, like, unbelievable. Um, and I definitely could have seen him being a foul drawing, like, machine in the league if it ended up working with his crazy strength and explosion and just ability to, to you know, lower his shoulder and get into guys. Um, and, you know, constantly working in the post, using his footwork, his strength, his craft. It was all really impressive, but as we've, you know, talked about on this channel, like 6'8 post guys often struggle, and guys who are only dominant interior scorers at this level without, you know, requisite size, like Anthony Bennett, who I've done a video on, often struggle. Something that I want you to notice is how often on these plays Derek is missing passing reads and not making pretty basic passing plays. like. Uh, like it, it is alarmingly often how often you'll see like hands up teammates um, while Derek has the ball and like often it, it's hard to evaluate yourself like this um, like th this decision making stuff because while it's clear that there were some just like clearly missed reads like even though this ends up in an and one um, I think especially in the NBA where they're you know the defenders are bigger um, and like the better decision would be to kick here. Um, even though, like, in college, this was probably a fine decision because Derek Williams was shooting, like, 76% at the rim. Um, this, you know, in the NBA, would this would be a better decision. So this, this kind of stuff is hard to evaluate for sure, but it's certainly something to be aware of that having just general feel for the game is so important. And, and Williams really kind of struggled in those areas. Um, a lot of times he was just, like, not really aware of you know other options especially while he was on the move against like complex defenses like this guy is cutting to the rim and is pretty open um there's an open kind of teammate like right in front of him but you know William settles for a tough shot and while he does make those at you know a pretty solid clip because he was just like you know a monster vertical athlete and monster power athlete uh there were real moments where like another pass would have probably been better like Williams kind of drives and because of his scoring gravity he's able to draw two defenders that leaves his big man kind of pretty wide open and obviously Derek ends up scoring here this could have been a charge for sure um, and he's just so physically overwhelming this stuff doesn't really matter but 
when you think about his NBA translation, um, when you think about is this going to work against NBA defenses, against playoff defenses, it's important to consider other options and you know the kind of stuff that, that Williams necessarily isn't doing as well. A lot, of, a lot of his drives were kind of just like barrel towards the rim and, 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 and pray, which again was an effective strategy because of his tools at the college level, but it was clear that just the general scoring craft um, was really lacking. Even in like the good passes that Williams had, you kind of see everything was just a tick or two slow. Processing speed, which you know, it's just how quickly you can read and react to defenses and make passes and make plays and make decisions is critical. And Williams was always a beat or two slow. Like the pass needs to come out here because in the NBA, there will be hard rotations. There will be someone helping. Um, but Williams waits like an extra beat. And in, in college, it ends up being fine. But those are the kind of plays that don't work in the NBA. And again, just very simple stuff that I think people probably overrated at the time was just like, you know, loses his handle, kicks out uh, off like a bad help, one pass away again. The, the kind of stuff that just like doesn't really happen in the NBA. Like you don't really get rotations like that, um, at least not very often. So this kind of passing stuff um, was like a little fake and like the, the feel was the was the big concern. There was like, I, I would have loved to see more of this like, you know, NBA style off ball stu stuff. Cause like, I think there certainly could have been, you know, an NBA world if Williams worked out where he was a really awesome cutter with just his explosion and his strength um, or, or someone who could really attack closeouts as well. But the, the important thing with closeout attacking is the shot, of course. And that was another big thing with Williams. Like he shot, he shot um, sophomore Derek Williams, saw it, shot 56, 56, 57% from three. Um, but this was kind of a fairly obvious flash in the pan kind of thing, um, based on what we know about shooting projection at this point. Um, the main thing that is things that are really important for shooting projection are, ver are versatility and volume. And Williams, again, only shot like three threes per hundred, which is very low volume. And basically all of them were wide, were wide open. And again, the closeout, the closeout attacking was so impressive. And in college, defenses, you know, respected the shot. And, you know, he just blew right by them and would, would dunk on people. But, you know, in the NBA, that obviously didn't happen. And I, I could not for the life of me get my hands on, like, Derek Williams' NBA missed shots. Like, I, I just could not find it. I, I wanted to include examples in here, like I did for the Bennett video, but I just couldn't find shit. Um, but most of Derek Williams' shot were, like, pretty wide open, like lots of time, stationary feet set, uh, you know, a sagging big man, or like a pick and pop situation like this, where, you know, there's basically nobody in front of him, and he has tons of time to load up and shoot. And while this stuff is good, um, you see someone who has a really, really high, like an unnaturally high, um, you know, three point percentage on low volume, that certainly can be a red flag. Um, guy who was an okay free throw shooter and while he was awesome in this, you know, other two point range, this like mid range pull up stuff, I think it's clear from the tape that Williams was not only shooting like pull up mid ranges, as I talked about in my shooting projection video, like that can be an indicator, but all of that like mid stuff was like, you know, 10 feet in post up. So the shooting versatility was not really there. Um, and that, you know, ended up unfortunately being the case for him in the league or he was never able to do much as a three-point shooter in terms of percentage or volume, which you know certainly hampered his ability to, to, score, to score efficiently. Uh, the, the foul drawing was there, but he just wasn't able to really contribute as uh, an efficient score, which was really the whole draw with him. Um, so yeah, a, a couple pitfalls right there, shooting versatility and volume, like don't get caught up by the shooting projection. Um, like the, the feel being so, so important. Like just taking a look at the, the list of like non-true bigs who were sub, you know, sub, sub five assist to turnover, which isn't everything. And, you know, sub six threes per hundred, which is, you know, almost double what Derek did. It's, it's, it's a pretty grim list. Um, obviously there are, you know, some exceptions like Doug McDermott was obviously a crazy shooter and he wasn't actually so prolific as a three point shooter until his like later years, but just a lot of, you know, players that maybe you aren't aspiring, um, especially as a number two pick to, to kind of come out as, um, so those are just some things to keep in mind. Also like 
it seems like this like this tournament game was like a big reason for Williams's rise and you know I think I've used to be pretty self-explanatory like don't overrate players so much because of a small sample because of the tournament um and I'm not talking about his defense in this video but it was pretty good I would have expected it to be better than it seemed to be because like Williams was really effective using his length and his strength and his explosion like he seemed to have good timing on these blocks and while he wasn't like a crazy smart rotator he was always just disrupting with his motor and his energy and his length and being able to contest and you know use his size um and just plays like this where he would have like college bigs like like Markeef Morris posting him up and he would be able to eat like eat a big hit keep balance and go up quickly and block the shot like this is such impressive core strength balance second level explosion uh but yeah i hope this was a fun little look back at Derek williams and maybe you watched him back then and you know thought he was great or didn't um and i hope you enjoyed this